go skywards and the match is on. Poetry in motion. What we'd like to see more often. Mm, something must be broken. Uh, probably nose, few teeth, an arm. You know, rip. was worthy of a black orc. You're telling me it'll take a while to get over it. Every now and again, Blood Bowl throws up a real mixed bag of a team. Like the Motley Horde is made up of a bunch of misfits. Yeah, can't be easy to coach those cast-offs every day of the week. Coming. Well, it is a violent sport. Yes, I can get their game going again. As soon as he throws his first punch. We know the opponent will be out for lunch. Just look at the fans. They're red hot. A majority of supporters reckon that the league should take measures to prevent the small minority of peaceful fans from watching a match from the terraces. They've got a point. If they don't want to join in the fun, they might as well stay home and watch it on cable vision. Nice left punch, right on the nose. Sure was, Jim. It's broken now. <laughs> mm, what violence. Yes, it's a great spectacle, Bob. Yep, upside down. That's one way to look at things. Ha <laughs> ha! Stunned! What an idiot! The Blood Bowl panels are littered with the stories of teams who've gone bust with crippling debts. And with the cost of doping and bribery on the rise, the problem won't be going away. That reminds me of when I took Griff to bits in the 91 final against Reitland. Oh, yeah. You kneecapped him. You can't say much about that. Full-blooded, but perfectly legal. Boom! The player goes...
goes directly to the dugout. Well, at least it's not the morgue. Wizards have not always been able to cast spells safely from behind the sidelines. Why are you playing at the time in an Albion League, a second division that prohibited spell casting from off the pitch? Oh, yes. They were great times. I remember fans traveling to games just to see how well Wizards stood up to the mad charge of a raving Blood Bowl star. The noise created by a sizzling fireball, followed by the characteristic sound of the snapping of a wizard's neck. He's got the ball! <laughs> now there's one that won't be coming back in a hurry. That's what happens when a pro crosses an amateur. Yes, splotch. I know he had a front row seat for that song, but I doubt he fully appreciate it. He won't appreciate the gaping wound either. Say in the hands. We don't see much of the heroes of law these days. I don't know. For any spectators who are aware, the heroes of law hope to show the world a better way by honest, strategic play on the pitch. Probably a good thing, you see. Don't hit me, don't hit me. I know, I'm, I'm sorry, that's an old reflex. I'm hearing the starting whistle. The player gets hold of the ball. Tell you straight, that hurts. What finish, what style, what perfection. What a hammer blow. Doping is really endemic in this sport. Isn't it written into the game rules? Looks like 
there was some bad blood between those two, eh, Bob? Yeah, Jim. Something to do with swapped body parts. He checked that move. Made him look stupid, you mean? Some players, eh, Bob? Uh, a couple of minutes on the life support machine will have him back in perfect condition. We're about to get started again. No doubt they've been busy in the changing room with the needle and Frank. Some of those injuries needed a rivet gun. This goblin team reminds me of the 1496 Slowdown Rats. That year, they trained with a giant black war wolf. Oh, yeah, the wolf ate six players and then ran away into the swamps with the only ball they had. Some teams have no luck. A mouthful of knuckle, and then a mouthful of dirt! Yeah, he went down face first. Ah. The ball is in his hands. There was a time when the Colleges of Magic hadn't yet ruled on limiting wizard assistance to teams. Who could forget the infamous 2472 Quagmire incident, when rampant spellcasting caused the entire Bright Crusader Stadium to sink into the earth? Nobody could forget that. People were blinded for miles around the stadium. I don't even think that his opponent made a move. Go, go! <laughs> Just like in 98.
You remember the 2503 season, which saw the retirement of one of Blood Bowl's favorite killers, Nobla Blackwood, who after eight great seasons finally hung up his chainsaw. It lopped off more heads than any other chainsaw in history, including a massive 14 decapitations in one match. one with a good reason to go see the apothecary. Yep, looks like he's gonna need a good one. A player that bad should not be allowed on the pitch. does all the talking with the fist. And they clearly know how to get heard. Clean take up there, nothing to say. And I don't have any remark to add, my friend. A recent medical report stated that cerebral hemorrhages were less frequent in blood bone players. Amazing, come to think. Not really, when you consider that brains are also less frequent. Some cute little elf beauties are selling big moot sandwiches in the stands. Hey, I'm off to get one. I'll be back in five minutes. And so now you like big moot sandwiches? Ah, no way! A little elf beauty, yeah.
the players are positioned and we're off. <sighs> Bob, seems like it's getting hot here. Indeed, Jim. Some sweltering heat rolling in over the stadium. Will be interesting to see how many of the players will collapse after this drive. Luckily for him, he's in a coma. Yeah, but I think it will still be hurting when he comes round in a day or two. Mm -hmm. That player is going to add a new star to his collection. That's why they're always on the front page of Spike magazine. Today's insight comes from Jaime Schnipp, coach and owner of the Goblin Lowdown Bats team. In yesterday's Spike magazine, he said that Blood Bowl was like war. No winners, just survivors. Oh, that's deep. About as deep as his team's position in the rankings. Thank you. 